uh, because my cloud is pretty, sometimes can get pretty filled up. Right, so we're so awesome. So before you, you share, let's just like do uh, like the context intro. So I'll just be like, okay. Greg, thanks for sitting there, sitting down with me. All right, Greg, I see your, your stash is kind of, uh, it's pronounced right now. What's that? <laughs> your, your mustache, you, you're, you're growing it. Yeah, well, it's always like that. I'm about to head to the bar. We're still like trim it down a little bit, but oh, all right, <laughs> you're thicker right. than me, man. What was that? Yours is thicker than me. Oh yeah, I got. I gotta go. I gotta get a guy that I see every two weeks because I have yeah, to go yeah. into Manhattan to get my hair cut. Okay. But <clears throat> so I just want to thank you for sitting down with me right now. We're you know for this under the hood series. Yeah, definitely, yeah. man. I'm ready to get to it. This will be fun. Yeah, and this is I, probably the. I'm interested in not just figuring out like why this is so awesome. Cause I, you know, I've been blown away with the other under the hood conversations I've had. Um, but I'm also kind of want to almost like communicate to you that what you're doing and the perception of the average person who's buying something like digital marketing, like you might not know how little they know and like what they're buying, thinking that they're actually like what they're buying versus what they're getting. Right. So for example, like when, um, when somebody purchases like an SEO from a big box agency, like a yellow pages remnant company they're they, they're probably what they're doing is <clears throat> they're getting a website with maybe some, some on page SEO potentially optimized for one long tail keyword. And the idea behind it is just essentially to, to get the perception of results rather than actually get the results because, yes. you know, so, uh, so let's, uh, yeah, just kind of like walk me through some of the onsite prep because, you know, more of the, um, more of the backlink stuff is more heavy in traffic tsunami. And, you know, interestingly enough for actually most people, like what we're doing with the GMB and onsite, you know, one guest post, like that's going to be just astronomically more powerful than almost what anyone else is going to do. Yeah, what's cool is what you learn in, you know, with us right now, just in the, the quote unquote beginner stuff mm -hmm. is going to have you more advanced than most SEO agencies out there. I'm talking about big agencies because they just don't know where to put their focus. And what I mean by that is, you know, there's like something like 200 plus ranking factors, right? And because over the last 13 years, Mike and David have allowed me to just do SEO. You know, I've put up hundreds of different sites. I've compared data and I've really narrowed it down to like five big things that are, you know, are the main ranking factors. So because most people don't understand this, they're spending all their time on, you know, kind of evenly distributing their time to these hundreds of things and their focus is just scattered. Right. But mm -hmm. what I found is I literally ignore, you know, 190 to 195 of those 200 ranking factors and I laser focus on the five to 10 big ones and I rank for pretty much anything I want. I rank, outrank my competitors very often. Wow. It's just like anything. I mean, if 5% of the, or, you know, 2% of the search algorithm takes up, you know, 95% of what's going to rank you, if you put your focus there, you're going to rank a lot better, right? Rather than even if you're not on. perfect, even exactly. if you're not perfect. I see that. Yeah. Exactly. And so that's funny. It's, I, you know, and some in the back of my mind, I almost had this idea of like a maliciousness, like no one, I know like it might even come off as that. I don't think any, any business is malicious and thinking like, Oh, we're really going to cheat them out of an opportunity. It's just that they don't even know what they're not, what they could be giving people. They don't even know that they have this weakness. In fact, um, I remember when I was selling, I, I thought like I'm giving someone a, the best thing. And uh, I didn't know that it was, it was basic. It's like, like really basic. And uh, I'm thinking even if like, with the best intentions, if one of these agencies is like, all right, yeah, there's 200 factors, let's pay attention to them. Like if they're putting in the exact same amount of time that you or you know, regular fusion guys putting into it, but they're spending it and they're dividing it between those 200 factors, there's just no way that the most important factors are going to get the attention that they deserve. And, and the other time thing is money. Like, and the other thing is like when something happens or like rankings go up and down, they're, they're not sure what made the rankings go up and down. So they don't know what to change. Mm. But literally, I mean, again, anytime I need a change or I need something to move up, I change one of these few things. Like I don't worry about the other stuff ever, never. Like it's not even mm. really on my radar and just focusing on these few things is what, is what has allowed me to rank for virtually anything I want. Yeah. Like just essentially if there's three to five levers that you could pull, push, whatever, then you're going to, you're going to correct course very right. quickly. 
Right. I mean, think about it. Like, see, you could break it down, say someone who's in a fight, right? Say you're in a fight with someone in a like, cage fight. I watch UFC, <laughs> right? And yeah. just say, like, you know nothing about fighting and you're punching the guy in the toe. You know, you're punching him in his shin, <laughs> right? Right. This is perfect analogy. You're, you're punching him in his elbow and you're punching him, you know, in his finger. You're like, why isn't this working? Well, yeah. I know if I know fighting, so I know I'm going to punch him in his kidney. I'm going to punch him in the back of his ear. You know, I'm going to punch him Ooh. directly in his nose so his eyes water, right? So if you know directly where to punch or directly where to hit, just like with algorithm, if you know directly what to adjust, then you're going to get the best results. You're never going to have a knockout if you punch someone in the finger or the toe, right, or the knee. Oh, my God, the elbow. That killed – it's like it, – imagine like if you've been working out at the gym real hard and your, your, your punches are so hard, but you're punching to the elbow. Mm -hmm. Oh, like it's, it's not going to yeah. work. And, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Elbow punches. It's actually <laughs> the newest thing. I'm going to get that guy's funny bone bad. Right. So, it really so, hurt him. So like what, like, so we, we just signed up, you know, this new person color, right? Like if you pop open, can you, uh, can you share a screen? Yep. Let me pop it open here. Screen share. You see me? Uh, yes, I see you. Okay. So what questions would you have about this? Well, I'm, I'm almost kind of putting myself in the shoes of a person who, who has this site, like who, who's the business owner. And, um, because when I did a search for them, they literally like, couldn't show up if it, their life depended on it. Like I did all of these searches, like everything short of just typing in the name of their business and they weren't ranking for anything. Okay. And well, so let's figure out yeah. why. Okay. So, you know, a lot of people, they come here, this is a good looking site, right? So, right. It is. That's what I thought. That's why I was so surprised. Yeah. So people who are coming to this may say, well, this site should rank well, right? Cause I mean, say they're, we're, we're gonna assume they're a good business. They do a good job. Why wouldn't they rank well? Well, what you gotta understand is remember, Google is not this super smart thing. They have to read the data you give them, right? Mm -hmm. if we know the correct places to put those data, just like how to throw the correct punches in the correct places, then we can rank for what we want, okay? So, mm -hmm. so two of the most important places are in the domain name, Okay, or, or the inner URL. This right here is the domain name. It's colorbrightpainting.com. And yeah. inner URL would be like a page on here. So it'd be like slash, you know, deck pain or slash. Yeah. Attic, right. So you always want to look at the domain name and the URL. One thing I really like about this site is they have painting in their domain name. It identifies yep. what their site's about. Okay. Exactly. That's yeah. One of the biggest ranking factors. You say, well, they have that in there. Why aren't they ranking for what you want it to? Well, you got to give Google the rest of the data, right? So let's go to their title. Right up here, it's color bright painting, serving the building industry for over 50 years. Oh man, there's nothing in there. Yeah, there's so, nothing in there. That's a keyword. Yeah. So what so are we telling painting. Google right here, right? Remember, Google goes in, they don't know if your site's a good looking site, right? It doesn't have an opinion, it just reads data. Okay. So mm -hmm. if they're coming in, they're reading color bright painting in the domain name, and then they're reading color bright painting, serving the building industry for over 50 years. So what Google knows about this site is it's a painting site, okay? Sure. And they keep seeing color bright painting. So I'm going to assume that they're ranking for color bright painting. So let's go take a look and see if they are. Color bright. Is that how you spell it, color bright? Yeah, it looks, like, it looks right to me. Oh, they actually have a space. So they do color bright painting. And they have a good chance to rank for this, and they do. Why is that? Why do they rank for that? Because they have these keywords in important places, right? They have color yep. bright painting in their domain name and color bright painting in their title, which are two very important places. Yep. Wait, is it 18 Crag Court? They do have a GMB listing. Uh, let me look down there. I thought they didn't. This right here. Yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah, they might just. They probably show up for it for, oh, okay. You thought they didn't have a, um, a GM. No, well, they didn't have the postcard approved. So I know that. Okay. So that color, but, but also you don't, they don't have a website attached to their GMP listing. Yeah. So you can probably go in and edit that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's as simple as that. I mean, people don't think it's that simple, but when it comes to like, now they're ranking for this because they have keywords in the right places. And also this isn't a very competitive keyword, right? It's yeah. the name of their company. So there's not like a ton of people competing for this keyword, but the ranking for sure. this, they have these important keywords in the right places. Yeah. Right? But if they didn't, would you like assume that it was just preposterous? Yeah. So again, like if this, if their name of their company was like, let's say it was just gregmorson.com, right? So not even the name of the company, 
And then in the title, they didn't have color bright painting. They wouldn't rank for it. It doesn't matter. Oh, of course not. Yeah. Right. But that shows you, you have to have the right keywords in the right places. Now, many times a site like this, they're trying to rank for like city painting, right? Or city painters. Well, one change these guys need to make right off the bat is changing that homepage title. Okay. They need to go in and literally takes 30 seconds. What's funny is I have clients who have sites like this and they'll be like, you know, we're trying to rank for Philadelphia painters and uh, you know, we put a lot of time into it and we just can't get it to rank. I'll go look at their, their uh, title and the title's like home. Like that's it, just home. Oh, and I'll go in and I'll make a, a quick change. You know, I'll take 30 seconds, change the title, make sure Philadelphia Painter's in there and then move up like that to the first page, you know, within yep. a week or two, so. Yep, and people say, sometimes people put like number one painter in Long Island on there. Does that, does that number one thing, like, is it just kind of like boasty? Is it at offer anything? Like, does Google see that as something valuable? No, they won't see it as something valuable, but it, what it can do is just adds keywords to your uh, ability to search. Okay. So for example, if we go and we type in, Oh, uh, if they type one, in number one mold removal company, in, I believe a site that we, you know, do a, precision. we show was showing up and here we are right here. Okay. Yep. And one of the reasons we show up for that, because I actually use that for one of my anchor texts when I build a link, right? So, uh, yeah, so an anchor text, and we'll get into this. This is more advanced stuff, but I just want to cover it quickly. Anchor okay. text is basically the text of the link you get from someone else. So yep. if a different website linked to me and the link text said number one uh, mold removal company, that's kind of credits me for that keyword. Mm, there's so many like little sneak in opportunities, not like, you know, illegal, but like, you know, sneak it in. But, but you know, often people will look for like best painting company. And if you have that in your title, that seems like it's really solid. Exactly. So what I always tell people is make sure you have your most important keywords in your title. Now you also do want to consider click through rate. Like you want it to be appealing. You don't just want to stuff keywords in there and have it just look ridiculous but you want to find a balance between, you know, having a good title, but also including the most important keywords. Mm. So this, it's almost like uh, if I were to have a web, like a domain with no power, or if I was even starting a new business, I might even think about just naming my business for like an exact match domain almost. Yes. Yep. And it, of course this all is advanced training, you know, yeah. to have pick a domain, but yeah, if you have a keyword in the domain, like if you had, you know, uh, PhiladelphiaPainters.com, that's going to help you rank very well for Philadelphia Painters. Right? It is, yeah, for sure. But the problem is it limits you, you know, for certain things. A lot of times you get a client and you'll rank them for Philadelphia Painters and they're like, well, I also want to rank for all these other cities now. And you're like, well, your domain name is PhiladelphiaPainters.com, so we could do it, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, it doesn't go. Yeah, right. I hear what you're saying. You just got to have yeah. a plan in place and make sure you stick to that plan before you execute. Yeah, unless it's like New York painters, then there's, there enough, there's enough to go around for, yep. for forever. There you go. So that's what's interesting is Greg, and you, you know, you maybe you've thought about this before. Is a lot of companies um, when I first started working in digital marketing, they, like in 2013, they would still call themselves like A1 Painting mm -hmm. because in the phone book they'd show up first. And so people actually did. This is not like a new phenomenon. The idea of like naming your business so that you rank. Gotcha. Gotcha. I didn't even think about that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That, and it was just like, why would someone be triple A? Um, why, does, I mean, I think they probably made a mistake because probably single A ranks before triple A, but in like alphabetical order. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, That's cool. All right. So we got color bright. All right. So if you scroll down a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, Greg, Greg, there's, there's more than a pick, right? These little things here, like, there's supposed to be keywords in this H, the heading, and then the yeah. sub and the content too. And there's just literally the same keywords, the same yeah. like that no one's going to search for besides painting. Yeah. So again, like they, you know, they have painting here, they have painting here. You want to mix in different variations of that. And I don't know the niche very well, but you would at least want to have painter somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have painting up here, mix in painter right here. Again, these are called H tags. These are basically H tags are basically bigger text on the page. And that, again, that identifies to Google that that's more important, right? If you have a bigger text on your page, yeah. obviously it's more important, right? Sure. So yeah, you want to mix in like, so what I do is I put my most important keywords in the title. So I don't know, again, what was, what city are they trying to rank in? 
Long Island. Yeah, it's Long it's Island. like it's yeah, it's kind of like its own beast in terms of the geography and how people talk about it colloquially. Okay. But yeah, Long Island would be, you know, it's two point nine million people. Gotcha. Two counties. Yeah, so they want to have you. They want to have like uh, you know Long Island painters and then whatever in the title, you know, kind of like the most important keywords mm-hmm. and whatever they can't get in there, they kind of want to mix in down here. So maybe they have like Long Island painters, you know, the best painting company or something like that. Um, yeah, so and, here, they, and they're high end. They're like high end, high end painting. They might want to. Okay, so since you don't have high end here, you might want to do you know a, a high end painting service, something like that. You know what I mean? That allows you to rank easier for high end because you're identifying that you're a high end painter on an important place on your page. So yep. again, it's, it's literally like people try to like change their image text and go in and create something called schema, which is just a, a more advanced than I even know about. And I don't pay attention to this, you know, quote unquote advanced technical stuff. I focus on the big things, you know, the title, the domain, the URL, the H tag, the important places you're identifying what the site's about. And I change those things. Uh, and, what, and the meta description too? Meta description, yeah. So that's number four on my list. Uh, the, the most important is the domain name, and then it'll be the inner URL and the titles, and then the H tags and meta are, are kind of tied, I would say. So yeah, the meta description is basically the description of what the site's about. So if we go to a search here and we scroll down, this is the meta description right here for anyone that's wondering. And you can easily fill that out with plugins. Like I use Yoast SEO, and there's a little section there. You can fill it out, you just put it in, and, and it's good. Yeah, I saw you can get that those star ratings in there, which yeah. are completely mean nothing, but they look really good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, so, and, yeah, it could. So with the meta, another thing I do is I make sure I mix in different variations of the keyword, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, if I have like Long Island painters up here, I'll say like painter in Long Island, you know, I'll just say it kind of in different ways. Or if I have like Long Island, New York up here, in my description, I'll say Long Island NY. So like the, the you know, the short yeah. version of New York. So All I'll the ways that up. someone would search. Yep. Absolutely. You know, what's interesting is one of the things that we, you know, we talk about really deeply in sales machine and my agency is, is really niching down and focusing. And it, it's just like one of the big values is, is that when I'm writing these descriptions and the titles and, all, and the H ones and stuff like that, like I know all of the services, I know all the ways people would search or talk about it. So I'm not losing, I'm not going crazy doing keyword research because I'm a freaking expert already. Yep. And, um, that, and the thing is, is that like a big agency, it's not really possible for them to become an expert at everything, at literally everything. Because I remember sometimes, but you know, big, uh, the, the company I worked at wouldn't take everyone. There actually had some guidelines, but like a, uh, a bigger Yellow Pages company in their mind, like, well, we wouldn't not let a business in the Yellow Pages. And it really is, I know it sounds like so old, but it actually still is the mindset because the people who are running that are still running this digital thing. Right. And so they're like, well, we would not have a business here, but it's just impossible for this a company to be able to like have this level of nuance and understanding of a business unless you actually really cared and you did the research, which is one of the, is one of the, um, was one of the, like the modules that's in here for this, right? Yeah, I just shot a video with Dan, actually. It's like, even if I know nothing about a niche, I can know everything about it within five minutes pretty easily with free tools. And we shot that video actually already, so. Oh, okay, cool. I'm, I got to watch that too. Even though I, I, I consider myself to be an expert on pretty much everything home service related, law and like dentistry and that kind of thing. Um, What's cool is like when you yeah. do your research, it like you'll, it'll bring up stuff that you've never thought of, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Like, you know, like, Actually, I did. I think I did it for painting as the as the example, and it was doing like exterior painting, interior painting, like just different types of painting that I wouldn't even think of, you know. Even if I knew a lot about the niche, and just gives you a whole list of things to pick from for what you want to, you know, put in your site and in your data. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I'm I, I'm kind of curious, right? Like sometimes you know people are gonna they'll like make a deal or sell a deal to someone who is probably like in a competitive area mm-hmm. with a competitive niche and in my mind i'm like man how how can we help those people uh, meaning like what's the advantage that we could have because i mean first of all i think on you're, what you're saying when i've heard so far is like on page is just like so important that you get it right yep. that that could make the difference literally just right away yeah i mean i've had clients where it is the difference you know they have links in place and you know good links Yet their homepage title is home, right? You're, they're not identifying what their site's about for yeah. people. 
It's one of the most important places. You make a title change and their site literally jumps way up. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh man, I'm actually really seeing something interesting. Like, um, like you know that show House with the doctor? He's like yeah, a doctor house, house, right? But I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So anyway, one of the things in the show that is, is so awesome is that he's got such a vast knowledge of medicine medicine that he has like a very macro view so he can look at all of these different holistic factors that are go into this and he'll be able to understand how those fit into the to like the, the health of that person understanding what's stopping them and it sounds like that's kind of like how we we view this here is like there there's no one detail that you should be or need to be focusing on. You got to look at the entire picture and looking at the order of lists and the priorities. And uh, that's probably why the person who had tons of great links and all that stuff, they weren't ranking because whoever set them up just wasn't looking at it like that. Mm -hmm. They just didn't understand. They, so you know, yeah. they scatter their focus so much that they miss the big stuff because they don't know it's the big stuff. You know, they exactly. haven't identified that. I get it. I get it. So, I'm thinking, oh, the, the question I had was like, okay, so let's say there's other companies out there and they've got the advantage of having more of an exact or semi-exact match mm -hmm. uh, domain. So what kind of expectations can I give them? Relative, like, I'm assuming like all things equal, which is not true, but all things aren't going to be equal. But let's say there's two two fusion guys that are, you know, for some reason in the same city doing the exact same niche mm -hmm. with the exact same ultra specific niches. If all things are equal and one person has like an exact match domain and one person doesn't, it, will that I'm essentially just have them bump up on top of the other guy? Yeah. Yeah. That'll give them the edge, you know, considering all the links are equal and all that, definitely no, that will give them the edge for sure. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's important. Yeah. Um, Let me think about yeah. it. Like, you know, it's easy to manipulate what's in a domain name, right? Like, like, cause Google goes by what's easiest to manipulate, you know, whatever's hardest to manipulate, that's what's the biggest rank factors. Cause they don't want sure. people to manipulate. So you would think like, okay, well it's easy to manipulate. I'll just go buy a domain with that in it, but it's not that simple because it doesn't start accumulating effect till you start building links. Right. So when you start putting time and money into a website by building links to it, then that starts accumulating more and more. You know, it's like this small when you first get it, but it's like a snowball as you build links because then you're showing Google, okay, this site's definitely about this because someone's putting in the effort to link to this site, so it must be credible. So the more credibility you build, that keyword in your domain builds more credibility as well. You know what I mean? I do know, yeah. And so how, like, how much of this is time-based? So let's say I've been, I have a website that's been around for six years mm -hmm. and this other guy has been one around for like six months. Is, is that length of time, uh, how, is that a big factor or not really a big factor? Yeah, so it is a factor. Um, and it's a factor up until like the two year mark, I would say, where then age isn't as big of a factor. But if you have, again, everything equal and you have like a six month old site versus a six year old site, the six year old site's gonna win. Okay, but yep. if you have a six-year-old site that has no links to it, and then you have a six-month-old site that has a decent amount of links to it and all that, the six-month-old site can win out, right? Because So it all comes back to more than just age. Like age is a factor. It comes yep. down to links and all of that as well. I, I, I understand. I see that. And um, I was thinking the chances are if someone has a six-year-old site that they probably don't have the most up-to-date type of on-site that you're talking about and they probably don't have the most up-to-date link percentages with anchor text exact match and all that kind of stuff yeah. so in a lot of ways like starting it from best practices right now it actually seems to be like a pretty huge advantage yeah you know what's crazy i used to like buy sites at auction right and mm -hmm. you can like buy sites at auction they're pre-owned they have a whole bunch of pre-existing power to them and it gives you like a big head start well i changed recently i don't do that anymore because of the way the algorithm now I prefer to buy my sites new, start fresh, and do it the right way from the beginning because those sites seem to rank so much better and so much quicker and with so much less um, resources because if you do everything right from the beginning, it, it just it compiles and it just seems to rank so much better overall. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems like it would um, be more future-proof as well. Exactly. exactly. 
Yes, because what we're doing is we're quote unquote manipulating the hardest of hard things to manipulate, which, you know, we cover in our training, of course, you know, it goes down to backlinks and, and that stuff as well. And I'm just like starting to see how the, the connection between like the niching that we talk about in sales machine and becoming a real expert. But I always talk about it from the perspective of your customer understanding that you get them. But now I'm just seeing this whole other side is that if you've got these high powered, um, you know, sites that you've been building up in a certain niche, well, couldn't you like double, triple, you know, quintuple, I mean, whatever, in, ad infinitum, cr use those as powerful links to the other people in the niche? Oh, yeah. Yep. I mean, you have to be careful of what we call footprints, which is, you know, Google knowing that you're doing that. But again, that's covered in advanced training where, you know, there's all types of tricks you can do with that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, that's interesting, man. That that would make it really, that would just really give you a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. So if you were to like redo, just, you know, I get that, you know, the, we got the basic things down there. Um, but basic, I mean, that's, I don't want to understate it. Those are hugely important. But where these things like learn more about us and choose your paint color, schedule a free estimate, like, wouldn't you, I mean, it sounds like you'd probably just want to have more variations of the keywords there and location. Yeah. I mean, like the, this stuff might be okay. I don't, cause they, they all, you also want to give like value to the person visiting and you mm -hmm. know, you want to allow someone to schedule a free estimate and choose a paint color and all that. So you could, could possibly lead that again. I don't know enough about the niche, but yeah. like areas like this, definitely you want to expand on your keywords. Like you said, high end, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, if there's different work for service or company that's used in the painter niche, like, um, I don't know, like again, interior painting, exterior yeah. painting, things yeah, like that. Crown molding, panel painting, exactly. um, like yeah. matte, gloss, eggshell. Exactly. Yeah. And there's also like a painting company. I know because my, as, you know, this landlord I used to have had an interior finishing company. And he, uh, he told me that there was this one person who was extremely wealthy who had a, a ultra gloss blue wall that cost $50,000 just for that wall, that one wall. Crazy. Um, so in some ways I'm thinking, why would this person put color bright in on, at the top of there? Because nobody's looking for color bright when they just type in high end painter in Long Island. That's right. That's right. Cause we already know what this site's color bright, right? I mean, they have yeah. it branded here. It's in their domain name. They don't really need to repeat. They're kind of wasting space here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're uh, wasting opportunity. Yeah, I see that. Right. Exactly. So if you look at, so if you can't, Right, so this is the thing somebody I was talking to someone the other day and they're like, man, I don't think SEO is going to work for me because the guys who are ranking at the top have um, HVAC or AC repair or cooling and heating in their, um, in their domain. So how am I going to like leapfrog them or how am I right? So they're like you said, they're not going to be able to, to get that, but they still have, if they click on services, they could have like colorbrightpainting.com forward slash, Long Island interior painting, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And so that would make a big difference too, because you said it's domain, but it's also URL. Yeah, and so you know it's advanced. Uh, what I'm about to say, but it's also how you theme your site with your backlinks, right? Mm -hmm. Someone can have HVAC in their domain, and I can have just my name, no keywords at all, and I can still outrank them. Remember, it's 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 a big ranking factor, but you can overcome it by doing everything else right as well. Yeah, I see that. And then maybe, maybe at that point, like is the on-site optimization, you could start looking at maybe thing number six, seven, and eight on that list in your mind. And then it becomes, you can get more granular there. But yeah. this is what I, from what everyone I've spoken with so far, it's almost like, don't even bother, like at all, <laughs> like with anything besides these top five things you talk about, like there is, there's no value until like, I don't even know. I, I don't even have a perception of it, but there's just no value to mess with anything until you handle these top things. What's what I love about that is it actually just makes it easier. Like, cause in my mind, I'm thinking, all right, I just got this new customer and I, I really want to do right by them. And for me, it's, it's like this peace of mind that I can get knowing that like, if I just do these five things and knowing that you've tested this out, like on a thousand websites and spent over a hundred thousand dollars just to figure these things out so that, I can hit the pillow at night knowing that I'm like doing all of these top things. And then anything else that I could do is not going to make 
even close to 10% of a difference, like the 90, maybe it's like a 95, 5% difference. And that 5% would only make a difference if I've already like mastered the 95% of stuff that makes a difference. Yeah. I mean, just to put it in perspective, you know, I have affiliate sites making a lot of money. Those are the only things I focus on. I never focus on the other stuff. It's those top five things and that is it. I don't put, I don't do anything else. So you know, even my sites are making a whole lot of money in very competitive niches. That is all that I focus on. Yep. Wow. And uh, I guess you, you focus on getting better at those things or better understanding those things. It doesn't well, I've done sound, it so yeah. much that uh, I've kind of, you know, there's not really any further for me to go with it. It's more about that's kind of automatic for me now. And then it's mm -hmm. just getting the backlinks correct. You're just working on the backlinking part. Mm -hmm. All right. So I wonder if there's any other nugs that you've got here because I'm, it sounds, I'm pretty clear on um, some of these things, but so I would, I guess what I'm thinking is I just kind of want to like transfer this to you. So it's like, I'm this painting company mm -hmm. and I'm thinking to myself, man, I got a good website. And like, why you have that series? Why am I not ranking? And mm -hmm. you, <laughs> right. Like what, what would you say to this person like about their website right now? Like, Hey, why am I like, I'm not ranking. My site looks good. Like, how are you going to help me? Cause my site already looks good. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a salesperson, so you probably know exactly what to tell them better. But one thing you probably don't want to do is be too technical with them. I'm guessing you wouldn't want to be like, Hey, you have the keywords in the wrong places. And you know, you just need to tell them in a, in a different way that, you know, they're, they're just not doing things correctly as far as how Google, like Google can't read correctly what their site's about. You need to make changes. And you would probably be better to explain how to tell them that. Um, I, I just thought of it. I have like the, a really good idea because <laughs> what I just heard from you, which, which is pretty much like this. It's like, listen, um, Google doesn't have people sitting in front of a computer manually going through each person's site and being like, oh man, this looks good. Let's yeah. rank him number four today. <laughs> they're, they're not, it's not how it works, right? There's, there's like ways that they figure out. And there, I don't know if there's like a good looking algorithm that they have. No, they have it doesn't matter how your site looks. Okay. Virtually. Yeah, okay. Virtually none. And maybe at some point that could be a factor, but they're not, they, like I would say, you know, they're, I don't have people looking through each site manually and deciding like, you know, stroking a beard and being like, yeah, you know what, let's, let's move this guy up. Mm -hmm. What, and essentially what it, what it looks like is they're looking at these five factors and cause we know I would, this is like the real pitch that I would do. I, this is the line that I would say. And I it's not like I'm making it up. Like I'm confident because it's like, listen, we spent, hundreds of thousands of dollars investing into websites to understand what the top factors are. So when I go into your site and we're working together, I'm go I have already identified these top five things. Um, like, and I see on your site right now that pretty much all of them aren't being enacted. Yep. I'm going to go in there. And when I adjust those top five things, I can be hundred percent confident that I have done every single thing that you can do to optimize your site in the ways that make the most sense. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And then, um, and then the thing I was just thinking, like, you know, that there's this actually this algorithm or the way they talk about beauty There's like, if your eyes are a certain distance and your mouth is a certain distance from your nose, like you will be beautiful. And there's these numbers that are behind it. And that, it kind of makes me think like, that's kind of exactly how this on-site SEO works. Like you don't need to know anything about the eye color and the eyebrow shape or the, you know, any of these things, it's all about those distances, those couple proportions will determine the beauty. This is exactly what freaking SEO on site is, man. Yep. I'm pumped up about that. I'm going to get that analogy in there, Greg. All right. <laughs> cool. So I think we got everything we need, man. Right, awesome. um, I'm excited. Uh, that's it. Cool. Awesome, man. Hope people enjoyed it. You too. Man, that's a, that analogy is so perfect. That beauty yeah. analogy. That's like exactly that. what this is. Holy shit. Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to flesh it out because okay. there's, but uh, all right, this was solid, man. All right, awesome. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the share now. Yeah, go ahead, stop it. And then, uh, where do recordings go for this? Do you know? Well, if you recorded it, uh, it's gonna go.